SexyHackers.com Sexy Hackers presents a podcast where anything can happen so long as it's written down in a book. Warning. Do not read this book straight through from beginning to end. These pages contain many different adventures you can have in the Himalayas as you search for the abominable snowman. From time to time, as you read along, you will be asked to make decisions and choices. The adventures you take will be the result of your choices. After you make each choice, follow the instructions to see what happens to you next. Be careful. Mountaineering can be dangerous. Think before you make a move. You cannot go back. The mountain range is vast. The terrain will often be unexplored. Your expedition will be difficult. Good luck. Sexyhackers.com Life is like a story With many paths to choose I gotta get some good friends To help me make so here's the plan Just take my hand The adventure's just begun And all we have to do Is turn to page fun And hello and welcome to Turn to Page Fun! <laughs> Don't know where that one came from. <laughs> Uh, the only podcast where I, your host, Nick Fira, read through a bunch of game books like Choose Your Own Adventure, etc., etc., uh, with a lot of my very, very funny friends. And we read them and review them for you, the listener or viewer, uh, mostly listener. An idea that's so good that I immediately stole it from my partner and froze her out of the production process. Right now, we are reading uh, The Abominable Snowman by R.A. Montgomery. Um, it is a uh, copyright 1982 by Bantam Books. And with me today uh, are some very good friends on my uh, immediate re- immediate re- re- immediate <laughs> <laughs> immediate re- re- immediate right. I have um, a novelist, um, a novel enthusiast. <laughs> yeah, those are both accurate. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> audio book listener audio uh, book listener and a very wonderful person and good friend mr jake wolf hi jake hi nick how have you been this week it's been a great week yeah yeah it's been good. really good i've been thinking about uh about people that are listening who might be named carlos and yeah? i just wanted to let them know like it's okay that you have the same name as our oh, yeah. enemy uh-huh. yeah uh, i know we've been we've been Really going hard on Carlos. We've been really ragging down on, on Carlos in this book. Yeah. So um, it's, it's not about you, Carlos, no. listening. It's about this particular <laughs> Carlos. Right. Yes. That we 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 turned on Carlos in record time. We did, yeah. <laughs> it was well, like, I don't think we, he made one bad decision. He railroaded us like <laughs> once, and we were done with him forever. Yeah. I was against him right away, and you all still wanted to go look for him. Yeah. You're right. I no, knew. you had a good instinct for I it. I tried to find him. Mm-hmm. But he has to find himself. Right. So I guess in short, we're sorry, Carlos. We're sorry, sorry, Carlos. Carlos is the world. Um, please interact with us. Uh, tell us that we're awful. Tell us that you don't mind. Tell us it's okay because we need to know here that it's okay from you, uh, yeah. Carlos. And you can make decisions. It's fine. Yeah. Just not in this book. Right. right. Just just run it by your protagonist that you're up on the mountain with. That's all. Yeah. That's all you have to do. Uh, not that hard. <laughs> sorry. Sorry. Uh, over on my far, far left, I have an um, uh, improviser, mm-hmm. uh, writer, uh, mm-hmm. comedian, oh. yeah, and 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 a musician. Yeah, I do that. Yeah, I Mr. That. Brian Bear. Hi, Brian. Hi, Nick. How's your week been? Oh, it's been good. I've been just riding that, uh, riding that <laughs> yak milk high. Just <laughs> right. <laughs> you know? Week. I'm very excited to see what's going to happen yeah. because last week was such a cliffhanger. So 
You know, uh, yeah, it's it's exciting. Like like I have uh I I've been feeling like down and logy and like low energy. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I went out and I just I I was like <laughs> maybe there's something to this, and I got me some uh, yak butter tea, yak Ooh. butter tea, and I uh, I started drinking it, and uh, I feel even worse. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it, it does sound like the grossest thing. It is the but, grossest thing, and yeah. it sounds like the grossest thing, and it is it's, uh, it's just, basically gravy. It's so just ranch dressing is what I'm. Yeah, it's my head can. Yeah. Old man brand. So I've been uh, I've been dipping uh, vegetables and uh, fried nuggets of right. things Ooh. into my tea lately. <laughs> That's this week's health news. <laughs> this week in Nick's uh, poor diet. Uh, finally, uh, someone whose diet I cannot comment to, um, who is also uh, an amazing cosplayer, uh, Disney enthusiast, yes, mm-hmm. and. Um, Improviser, uh-huh. a very talented actress, Aww. and also uh, and a very, very, very good mobile media creator. Really? That's what I like to call stickers. <laughs> <laughs> mobile media or mobile memes, because they are. They're little mobile memes. You can take them anywhere and mm-hmm. slap a meme on something. Yes. Um, Miss Joe Montana. Hi, hello. Joe. Hello, hello. <laughs> I'm so excited to say hi back to you that I never actually let you get out your whole phrase and i'm sorry for interrupting you but i'm just so happy to be here oh man that's infectious <laughs> like because when i came in uh i wasn't feeling too good because i just downed a whole quart of yak <laughs> <butter tea. laughs> and we'll do it and i was but quite, now I feel great. Quiet, Nick. The yak industry is going to come down on us oh, so hard no. for this big yak. <laughs> <laughs> sounds like a chewing tobacco. Big yak chew. It does. Big yak, yak chew. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Got some new sponsors. Uh, sponsored by Big Yak Chew. Oh, man. That's. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is that a map? Yes, there's Aww. a map at the beginning of the book. Um, mm. I have not commented on this map because it is adequate. Oh, um, that's good. Hey, all right. Uh, yeah, it, it shows you every where everything is. You know where oh, Tibet is, and Nepal, nice. and India, and Pakistan, Bhutan. Um, uh, you know, Kashmir. Um, I like Pakistan. the lack of, lack of features. It's just lines. That's yeah, it. just lines, and and it shows you like where where different mountains are. Hmm. Oh, also, fun. something that I noticed about the mountains, they all have like what sound like. Um, uh, more local names mm-hmm. uh, that mm-hmm. have been respected. You know the local languages, what the locals, you know, local right. people call yeah. the mountains. Uh, except for Everest, right? It's it, you yeah. know <laughs> they're all and K two. Yeah, yeah they're all like Dulagiri or Annapurna or yeah. uh, Go- Gosintapan and Sikkim. Um, uh, but then there's also and then and then this is Everest, <laughs> the tallest mountain. <laughs> Actually, its name is... No, I believe it's Everest. I yeah, believe we should call this one Everest. After me, Lord Racism Everest. <laughs> <laughs> no one has ever climbed it before. Me, actually. No one. No, no one. one's no one. ever climbed. No one with a flag. <laughs> <laughs> nah. Put those up on there. Put one of those on the moon. Okay. Yeah. It's yeah. ours now. Right. Anyway, uh, we are currently reading... Um, the Abominable Snowman by R.A. Montgomery, uh, cover eight, nineteen eighty-two. Uh, in this adventure, uh, we have we're trying to find the Yeti, mm-hmm. um, and we went with our friend uh, from the Nepalese government, oh, okay. um, uh, R.N. Rumal, and he is like basically giving us the rundown and the lowdown on what's going on with the Yeti, and they uh, are apparently the protectors and guides to Shangri La. So we have decided to go and change our lives forever and and find out the true secret of the Yeti. And then they asked us about four or five times <laughs> if we really wanted to really do that. Wanted. And we were like, yes, yes, <laughs> yes, yes. And so the last decision was whether we wanted to say goodbye to our friend, Carlos. Friend, in quotation marks. Or just ghost him. We were like, immediately ghost him. Just <laughs> yeah. do it. We are, we are so mad about that one time he railroaded us. <laughs> no, it was twice. 
Did he railroad us twice? Because first he went on the he went up to the mountain without our without mm-hmm. telling us uh, until yeah, he after, did do that. He did. and then uh-huh. uh, in that adventure he went off to help the people after being told, "Oh, we like we'd try already to help made the a decision yeah. on what to do about the people." And he was, and like, yeah. he was like, mm, "I think we should go." Yeah, yeah. he literally overruled us. Yeah. yeah, and and the I don't know if I would count the first one with the tent because because he was missing. Like we didn't. I mean, yeah, he did go off on his own, but right, that wasn't the plan though. Yeah, he was you're supposed right. to. Yeah, he did it without. He was asking permission and not. Forgiveness. He He's didn't have a permit. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's a good point. Mm-hmm. Anyway, right. Yeah, rock and roll. So um, we are going to go ahead and uh, ghost Carlos mm-hmm. and go along with uh, Zodak. Zodak, the giant Zodak, gentle man. You seek Zodak. Zodak. <laughs> Zodak motions to you to follow. He takes one giant step into the air. Mm-hmm. You look with amazement as he hovers a meter off the ground. What? (laughs) Then you step up into the air, and you, too, are suspended above the floor of the monastery. You're levitating. What was in that tea? (laughs) Whoosh! Whoosh. The two of you zoom out of the monastery, right through the walls, up into the sky. You travel at unimaginable speeds. You climb at a dizzying pace until the two of you stand on top of the sharp, Icy crest of Mount Everest. (laughs) Below you stretch glaciers, mountains, valleys. You see the world from the top. Zodak points to a narrow slot near the topmost point of Mount Everest. (laughs) A quarter goes in. (laughs) (laughs) He says, That is the route to Shangri-La. He takes three steps, enters the slot, and disappears from sight. It's like a platform nine and three quarters situation. You take one last look at the earth about you. You see the clouds rolling up from the flat, dry plains of the Punjab in India. You see the curve of the earth. (laughs) There ain't no curve. (laughs) All our flat earth listeners. Where? Where is it, protagonist? (laughs) All our flat earth listeners have immediately abandoned the show. And bye. (laughs) Right? And bye. Uh... (laughs) But the Yeti dance part. Do you think that's fun. accurate, though? Like, could you see from the top of Everest, can you see the curvature? Because in a plane, you can't. No, I don't think you're that high. Uh, I, I, I think. <sighs> yeah, of all I the stuff know. I haven't bought in this book, <laughs> yeah. this is the thing I'm going to pine. We just well, literally cause, cause magically here's the, here's flew the thing, up here. Because, all right. All right. Well, that I could believe. That I could believe. All right. I'm going to go on another rant. Oh, yeah, um, let's do it, please. So, all right. Here's a thought experiment, okay? Uh, on As to why you can't see the curve. All right, imagine, take something even smaller. Imagine that you're on a an orange or a ball. Or a fruit bat. Or a fruit, or a fruit bat. bat, yeah. And it's like, I thought that was an orange. No, it was a bat. A more awful uh, idea, um, yeah. All right, so so imagine imagine a smaller sphere that you actually see. Now, uh, now, no, just put a pin in it or, or, or something, and, and, and then imagine that you're on the top of the pin. When you look down, what you're actually going to see is it, is it makes a cone from every point and so when you look down on the edges of the cone, it's going to look flat. Oh. Because you're looking down perfectly in a circle that is, even though it's curving around you, even from your vantage point, you only can see so far until the horizon drops off. And so the horizon will always look flat until you can see a larger part of the whole. Right. And you're not going to be able to see that, you know, from a plane you're gonna have to go much much further away in order to be able to see the larger curve of the hole so that's where everybody who goes up into a plane and takes a picture and think that they've got you is <laughs> entirely full of shit um because yeah okay good job dude you're staring down uh <laughs> you're you're staring down the side of a, of a cone you moron um maybe carlos every, yeah every <laughs> flat, earth, a flat earther that's every why flat earther just gave up like that was it that was right right there like you know what i'm done <laughs> i give up on this show i was having yeah. such a good time yeah so so anyway. that's that's me ranting <laughs> um, can we get into freaking shangri-la all right all right, all right fine, yes. fine 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 <laughs> um all right uh you take one last look and you see the curve of the earth you see the contrail of an airplane far to the south <laughs> the chemtrail <laughs> Yeah, the chemtrail. You see the staple gun that has the sky attached to the sun. (laughs) (laughs) 
You see the CIA directive ordering them to murder JFK. It's all you here. See, you see the rockets <laughs> falling from the firmament <laughs> as they hit them. You see the aliens that have been oh, hid from us all along. You see the wall of Antarctica <laughs> surrounding everything. You, all right, see, all right. you see Tupac's <laughs> hidden elbows. Tupac waves to you. Mm-hmm. You oh. see the hole at the North Pole. <laughs> oh my God! The people things the things yep. people believe. Hitler right. comes crawling out right. from the Hell Gate. <laughs> <laughs> just one more. It's just one more chance for us not to go here. They're really trying to keep us. <laughs> All right. Then you step into the narrow chute. It's warm, glistening with the shine of a metal unknown to you. Adamantium. Uh, <laughs> unobtainium. Unobtainium. You're, that's why you're floating. <laughs> You seem to hover in space in the narrow metal tube, but in truth, you are moving at a great speed down through the center of Everest. There's a rose-colored glow around you. Where is Zodak? Some guide, leaving you alone. (laughs) Shade at Zodak. So, a rose-colored yeah. Is this, is this, what, yeah. Ooh, the roses. roses. References. Yeah. yeah. A lot of themes in what this. What was the other one? Magnolia? Yeah. Magnolia. Rose Magnolia. Yeah. Rose Magnolia. What Blue next? Stuff? Or it's the glow of lava. <laughs> Could be. With a gentle bump, you come to a rest. In front of you is a clear glass door. You push it open. <laughs> so there stands Zodak. Welcome to Shangri La. <laughs> you walk out into a dark green valley surrounded by low lying hills. In the distance are high mountains. One of them looks like Everest. You hear music unlike any music you have ever heard before. Good. (laughs) That's just Pavane. All right. Uh, It is somewhat like the sounds in the monastery. The bells and wind. The sunlight is warm and relaxing. Zodak leads you down a long trail to a seven-story building. It seems to be like a fortress, but it's painted white and red and gold. There are no soldiers, no guns. Only people would <laughs> smile and greet you as though you were an old friend. It seems so natural. You turn to Zodak and you get a shock. His form has changed. What? Now he's the mirror image of you. <gasps> okay. What does this mean? Although you never find out about that, you learn about many things as you stay in the valley. <laughs> what? I would like some resolution. Yeah, here's some entry. Nope, You'll nope, 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 nope. <laughs> Apparently this was written by J.J. Abrams. Want to see what's in the box? <laughs> Too bad. Uh, you have the chance to try many activities you could never try before. <laughs> but we're rich. We can try everything. But only what is available in the valley. You learn to be contented with the limits of the small valley. Try our Atari system. <laughs> yeah, but we're, we're second thoughts. One last chance. <laughs> what? Is that it? Is that what you want? <laughs> okay, you're on. Out of the valley of Shangri La and back to the real world. Is it different? Can you do whatever you want? Can you fulfill your dreams? <laughs> Can you enjoy your com- life completely? Huh? Can you? Or must you be content within limits? <laughs> the end. What in the glowing pink fuck was that? <laughs> okay. Dude, I, did I get the wrong page? I no. really know it's a Bergerac <laughs> wrote that for us. That That's... didn't make any sense at all. It was like so good. And then it was just like, I don't understand. What, what, yeah, it, what does it mean? One. What is it? What? What's it all mean? Huh? What's, what's it all mean, huh? Happy? Huh? huh? Are you happy? Are you happy? Are you happy in your little cage? Are you happy in your little cage? I don't understand. What the hell just happened? I so know. they went. We went down an elevator in Everest. Right. right? We found paradise. We came to a city, and so it was. There were no Yetis in the city, right? It was just no, people. No. Just a McDonald's well, building. <laughs> it's weird because there's a picture. Um, let me see. But he turned. There's into a us. picture where Zodak. Uh, he. he Turns into like a Yeti person when he's okay. talking to you. Okay, but then the then book says you? he turns into you. Are you in annihilation? Are we? 
a Yeti. I we're, thought we were a Yeti. Was aw, what I got out of that. And we I thought it was like Yeti a little Yeti, time. a little Yeti city, and like there were like Yeti business offices, and there were all these Yetis <laughs> sitting at their desks doing Yeti paperwork. And Yetiopolis. Being disappointed with a little Yeti life. <laughs> and the author Yeti must have thought that too, and was just like, you know what? Yeah. You bet you're happy here with your little Yeti world, aren't you? It's exactly the same. Everything. This is not my Yeti house. <laughs> <laughs> this is not my Yeti wife. My God, what have I done? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> abominable snowman abominable <laughs> wow that got real existential that, for yeah, no I reason I feel like R.A. Montgomery was writing it was just like are, are you happy what he's talking to himself at the end yeah, yeah. can you do anything or can you just go into limits yeah somebody give him a call Is it, uh, R. someone give R.A. a call we gotta find out how they're doing you know yeah. have to check in are you alright hey, <laughs> this uh, was in 1982 doing okay so. I know it was a while ago that you wrote this but I'm worried. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. All so right. do we take one of our yeah. 14 chances yeah. to not go there? Yeah, yeah uh, that's down. definitely uh, definitely uh, one way to end a book. <laughs> um, I wouldn't suggest it. Uh, it's yeah. <laughs> definitely a way that this book could end, but there are other a uh, couple other ways that this book might end that we still have time for uh, right after this quick word from our sponsors. SexyHackers.com This episode of Turn to Page Fun brought to you by whatever you want. What do you want? Do you want mm -hmm. things? Is that what you want? That make you happy? Yeah. You want, you want a cage? Is that what you want? You want to be in a little cage like a little puppet? Like a little puppet zoo animal in a cage with limits? Is that what you want? You know that being in a cage is the same as being out of a cage, right? Yeah. It's the same thing. Because freedom's a cage too, isn't it? Will that make you happy? Will it's, anything make you happy? What's going to make you happy? You know what? Nothing's going to make you happy. No matter how much things that you have or you're going to buy or you're going to sell, how are you going to be happy, huh? Yeah, you think you're having fun right now? Because you're not. <laughs> you're right. not having fun. Yeah. And even if you are, it'll fade. Yeah. Just like everything fades. Happiness fades. Yeah. Life fades. You, th you think you're not having fun right now? Because you are. <laughs> SexyHackers.com And we are back to turn the page fun. Woo. Still on that yak butter. Oh. Big yak energy. Big yak, yak energy. Uh, <laughs> all right, so uh, we are currently reading uh, The Abominable Snowman <laughs> by R.A. Montgomery. Uh, it ended with a bunch of really disappointing Weird existential shit. questions where the narrator literally yelled at us. <laughs> <laughs> um, turned into a lecture yeah. after yeah, we like lesson, and i don't know what the lesson was <laughs> i don't either uh, after we went to shagra law and then our guide turned into us and that <laughs> like an annihilation but then nothing was explained about that and we went back to the world but then I it wasn't know. the same yeah it sounded like they sent <sighs> us back they're like oh you're not happy here are you Bye. It and then that was weird. it. And we went back and weird. we reported it on the newspaper and nobody believed us. <laughs> I'm seriously not convinced that it wasn't a bit by Nick this whole time. Like, I'm going to rent this book. No, I, I literally, I glanced over and saw the words. at the. I was like, wow, that really is written down. <laughs> no, I, I'm not clever enough to come around with that kind of, <laughs> that kind of yeah. left hook. Uh, <laughs> Jeez. All right. Well, let's see. So we decided what, what uh, we would do. A uh, few of the protagonists decided uh, the first time out of the many times Renal gives you a choice not to go back um, or, or not to not to go along uh, and find out the secret of the Yeti. And we're going to find out what happens if we are not ready for the secret knowledge. <laughs> if we are not ready for that Yeti. <laughs> you are not ready for this Yeti. Abomina booties, dude. All right. So this is pre-gravy, right? <laughs> this is pre. This is pre gravy. Yeah, rated this is PG. Like rated PG pre for pre gravy. <laughs> I'm sorry, you can't come into this movie. You've got that gravy in the jar. <laughs> I eat gravy with every movie. <laughs> There's so many alternate worlds. This, in this, this movie's rated book. PG. <laughs> what if I had eaten? You wouldn't even know if I'd eaten this gravy. <laughs> All right. 
<laughs> All right, uh, let's uh, reject Runal. All right, we're going to reject Runal. You look at Runal and look at the monastery. You look at Carlos. No, I'm not ready to accept your offer. No sooner had you spoken the words than clouds choke the narrow valley. <laughs> choke you. The mountains seem to vanish, <gasps> and the monastery is swallowed up by darkness. <gasps> Runal turns his back to you and speaks as if to the wind. I am very sorry <laughs> that you cannot accept. <laughs> Since you do not feel that you can go ahead, the expedition is declared over. All <laughs> permits are revoked. Oh, oh, shit. You must return to Kathmandu and leave the country in 24 hours. Oh, shit. What? The note of finality in Runel's voice tells you <laughs> that you have no choice whatsoever. Your trip is over. Damn. The end. Oh, wow. Oh, okay. Wow. Yeah. Then we really should accept those teachings. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I yeah. They like it, it says it's got twenty eight possible endings. Uh, four of them <laughs> are you is like yeah you yeah, it's done. You you said no. You didn't want to keep going. Uh, I almost thought for a second it was gonna be like yes you you have looked in yourself and accepted that you are not ready for everything and therefore you are ready like a weird one of those parables i like how every and like everything you do is disappointing in the end yeah. like the, this is just a dark part of the just you know what i don't want the readers to be happy I'm not, i don't want them to i just want to you know dark what? part in oh, you, oh you don't want to go on the journey well then you're not going on the journey <laughs> bye the end you're done oh hey you want another option hey you want to try again? Sorry, not happening <laughs> again. <laughs> yeah, all right. Hey, hey, you don't want you don't want to wait it out and uh, and like let the yeti calm down a little bit. Uh, you're dead. Yeah, yeah. you get murdered by tigers. <laughs> you're dead by tigers. <laughs> Famous tigers yep. or Famous poachers. Tigers. Yeah, yeah they no. put you on their social media feeds. Ooh. Yeah, you're an influencer. Hashtag tiger. <laughs> Uh, if you are any, if any, any of you listening are a famous tiger, feel free to <laughs> yeah. give us a shout out. Hit us up, Tony, when you're done trying to save school sports. <laughs> Listen to Turn to Page Fun. They're great. Um, and we're sued. Um, uh, so uh, that's definitely a way that the book could have ended. Um, let's actually go back uh, to our decision uh, in uh, Runel's office. Mm. When he like hinted that he wanted to be a part of our <laughs> expedition, just because I think this is funny, um, <laughs> okay. where we chose uh, not to. Uh, well, we were given a choice of, of asking him to be part of our expedition or not, um, and so we're going to see what mm -hmm. happens when we choose uh, to not have us be a part of our expedition. Um, government permit man. <laughs> I think we'll go it alone, but thanks anyway. Mr. Runel shakes your hand, but he does not smile. Ooh. It's clear that you have offended this man. Ooh. What should you do? <laughs> Is an apology in order? <laughs> should you try to patch things up? <laughs> if you try to make amends and end up inviting him to accompany you. <laughs> turn to page 42. If you stick to your decision, turn to page 43. If you decide to I mean, try kissing him to see if it'll placate him. It really seems like we don't have a choice here, does it? Because yeah, we're just going to go right in the other direction. Where they're, no. really gonna, yeah. they're either going to bring him along anyway or yeah. get, get shit canned It's again. railroad, but just like the wording of it is fun. Yeah, it is. It's There's good. always a choice. Fuck this guy. And then, I like how it's just he'll end up coming with you. Like, <laughs> right. like you can't say, oh, I'm sorry we offended you, but we still don't want you to go. That It's not an option. Mm -hmm. Are you sure? Maybe you do. Uh, what are we gonna? What are we gonna say? I mean, we have to. We're gonna be mean. Are we I gonna be mean? Yeah, just go down the rejection path. Yeah, I think that's the other. You want to stay way. being mean? Okay. Yep. We yeah. politely said no, thank you. Okay. Yeah. Maybe he's getting a little pushy. You leave Runel's office. As you walk outside, you are hit with torrential rain. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I thought it was gonna be like a gun. <laughs> well, yeah, or like a club to the just rain. Okay. It falls from the sky, hitting the earth in explosive drops. Wow. You know, like rain does. <laughs> so well written. <laughs> you planned your expedition assuming that monsoons would be over by now. The Yetis were dancing over it. But apparently, they are not. You sit it out in your hotel for three weeks. The constant rain has closed off the trails to the mountain valleys with mudslides and boulders. Nature has gone wild because <laughs> you have offended her nature gone wild nature gone wild Woo! 
Tigers love beads. How how like how many that's that's a lot of beads to you know put around a whole mountain. <laughs> that's a lot of beads. Nature gone wild. Nature gone wild. <laughs> Nature has gone wild and your expedition is blocked for good. Too bad. The <laughs> end. What? So did Runel use the power of the Yeti to control the weather? Yes, Runel's okay. a wizard. Yeah. Okay. Clearly, That's he is a weather sense. wizard. <laughs> but I mean, he's like, got to the point, yeah, like stuff vanishes when he's around. Yeah, he's a wizard. That's kind of like screwing over everyone, though. <laughs> like, what, yeah, no, kind of don't is. Take oh, you the specifically <laughs> don't want to, you don't want to see Yetis? Well, then nobody ever okay. gets to see Yetis again. Mud slides for everyone. <laughs> but... <laughs> But oh? was Carlos not with us? Does this mean that Carlos got drowned to death on the mountain? Um, I believe that Carlos uh, definitely yes. died in a mudslide. <laughs> yes! Died in a mudslide. Our, our attempt yeah, it to was kill implied. Carlos. It was implied. Sweet vengeance! I hope oh, there is a boy. I, I hope he does die in one of these endings, you know? Right? Mm-hmm. Well, um, I mean, yeah. So could we could we try to say goodbye to him? Because there was some weird hint. That we could like, say goodbye to him. Yeah, do you want to do that? There was some yeah, hint that it that like is. might not go well for okay. him or okay. us. Yeah. Uh, all right. So uh, we were given an option uh, <laughs> to say goodbye to Carlos uh, last we week to, before we went off to Shangri La. <laughs> Disappointment Valley. <laughs> all right. So we're gonna see what happens uh, right there um, when we say goodbye to Carlos. You walk out of the room. The Yeti. Oh, the Yeti Zodak accompanies you. So he is a Yeti. What? So he is. Okay, so this is a this is another classic case of the illustrator not knowing what the fuck is going on because his initial illustration, the first time you meet an yeah, illustration just, of Zodak, he looks just like a big dude. He looks like Hagrid. Yeah, he he looks like Hagrid, but then in all, and then the book says that he's a Yeti, and it shows him as a Yeti in other places because he's wearing a coat. Right. You don't. Picture, yeah, yeah maybe when he takes the coat off, he's just covered in white fur. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a cat situation. Yeah, it's like a hat and a hat. Sort taking of off coats yeah. and still wearing coats. <laughs> the Yeti Zodak accompanies you. Carlos stands outside, as he was when you left him. He is frozen in time. Oh. What? <laughs> he can't hear you, nor can you hear him. You have become a part of a different world. You start to realize some of the consequences of your decision to go to Shangri-La. You say a quiet goodbye to Carlos, even though he cannot hear you, and follow Zodek back into the monastery. And then it goes to Zodek motions to you to follow. Okay, so it's... He takes one giant step into the air, and, and then it goes. So it's just, it's just a little detour. So it's like a weird... Yeah, who cares? Who gives a shit? Um... <laughs> The story is a lot of that. But there is um, a picture on this page. Uh, yeah. And I don't know if this is you or if this is Carlos. Oh. But that looks like regret to me. There That's is what it looks like. just a lot of regret on this face. A very pointy nose. Uh, the nose of a rich person. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> and oh boy! Hey, calm down there, Fitzgerald. <laughs> uh, and is, and and a little uh, and is wearing um, you know uh, a turtleneck because those are fun. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, same same kind of person that would be hanging out with uh, with uh, Captain America from Knives <laughs> Out. You know, same sure. kind of sweater. You mm-hmm. know, eat shit, eat yeah. shit, eat shit. All right. Yeah, what kind of person that would be screaming at him? Uh, I will not eat one I order. Have you guys seen that? It's I great. Know. I have not. Uh, I've not seen it. I heard it's good. Um, uh, there is an amazing line by Michael Shannon is the best line of the whole movie where they're arguing, uh, cause, uh, Captain America tells everybody to eat shit and Michael Shannon gets in his face and screams, I will not eat one iota of shit. And <laughs> it's, it's the funniest, like Michael Shannon is fantastic at that movie. He is, he is hilarious, uh, and also terrifying at the same time. <laughs> Like only Michael Shannon can be. Really anyway, uh, where well, the hell the, do we go from here? Um, is there anywhere to go? I feel <laughs> like that first ending really like threw us. Yeah, right. Um, well, we could we could uh, grudgingly One say, oh, "Fine, yeah. Rumal, you can come with us." Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Does that lead to the same monastery? No, there's Ooh, some stuff that happens. Okay, let's do All that. right, yeah. let's... Okay, so we're going to see what happens when we say, fine, Ramal, you can come <laughs> with us after this quick word from our sponsors. <laughs> Sexyhackers.com. 
This episode of Turn to Page Fun brought to you by Big Yak Gravy. Yeah, you got a big hunger and you need a big gravy to put on your food. So go ahead and get you some Big Yak Gravy. I brought some turkey gravy for Thanksgiving. Get out of here, Grandma, because here comes the Big Yak. What ding, about ding, me? I'm a ding, little ding, yak. Fuck ding, off. Ding. Big Yak Gravy. The gravy made from the biggest yaks for the biggest gravy flavor on the market. Oh, yeah. Oh. Big, yeah. <laughs> Big Yak Gravy. It's gross. SexyHackers.com And we are back uh, to Turn the Pace Fun! Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> products that bring you shame. <laughs> uh, we are currently reading... Um, Abominable Snowman uh, by R.A. Montgomery, one of our favorites. Uh, we've found Shangri-La. We found the Yeti. Um, we're just kind of picking through this book now to see the fun things that we can get. Um, so there is a decision where um, this uh, permit guy from the government, uh, Runal, uh, has asked us if we wanted to uh, bring him along. And then we said no, and then he got all bitchy. <laughs> but it gave us a chance to to like maybe make amends by uh, inviting him anyway. So uh, we're gonna see what happens uh, when we uh, when we relent and invite him <laughs> after he got all passive aggressive with us, and then controlled the weather and made him monsoon right. for three weeks. I didn't know he was Gandalf. <laughs> yes, uh, Mr. Runel, I beg your pardon, sir. I- I've made a mistake. This is your country, and, and we need your help. Please, please do accompany us. It, it will be our honor and pleasure to have you with us. The room is silent. You shift nervously and stare out the window at the palace guards and the formal gardens. Runel doesn't respond right away. He fiddles with a pencil on his desk, deep in thought. I appreciate your kind offer. <laughs> I can only accept if you allow me the great honor of being expedition leader. <laughs> if you will allow Rudo. this, I may be able to arrange for funds from the government, as well as tactical support from the Royal Nepalese Army, including helicopters. This catches you by surprise. You are the leader. If you allow him to be expedition leader, turn to page 54. If you point out that that will not be possible. (laughs) Point out. (laughs) Turn to page 55. Wow, they are really... They are They're really going the back and forth. This is why I wanted to go there, because you're just going back and forth being passive-aggressive with each it's other. This is just like a cultural thing where he's like, oh, yes, I could come, but I'd have to be leader. He's basically saying, like, I mean, you need me on this trip. His perspective, though, to, to be fair, is this is his house, basically. Like, yeah. this is my, it'd be like going to someone's house and be like, hey, I want to go wherever I want in your house. And they're like... Uh, I don't really feel comfortable with that. He does have the secrets of the Yeti. He does, so, but we so don't know. We that don't know yet. that. But it's still like this is my mountain. You know, I'm, let me let me yeah. take you. Let yeah. me give you a tour. So what are we gonna? What are I we don't gonna know, do here, man. Guys? What are we know. gonna? <laughs> we gonna starting, insist? I hate him more than Carlos right oh, now. Oh no! Right? I know, right? Yeah, He's being he so passive weird. aggressive. Uh, yes, yeah, gross. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I say, let's let him throw his little bitch fight and fight. Let him, him be, be the leader. leader. Yeah, you could be the leader. Be the better. We'll have helicopters, you bitch. <laughs> yeah, I mean, helicopters. What got us into this with Carlos? Wow. <laughs> All right, so yeah, let's let's uh, let him. You're in charge now. Okay. Okay, Mr. Runel, you may lead the expedition. I'm sure that our goals are the same, and we can use the extra support from your government. Runel's connections within the government turn out to be very useful. Soon the expedition has better supplies and equipment than you would have been able to get on your own. His knowledge about the Yeti proves to be useful, and you are already learning more about them. He makes arrangements... Okay, now, here... what? (laughs) 
<laughs> wait, wait, hold on. Fuck off. What? How? Because all right, now we've been through this book a lot, and yeah. I, I think this page was written with the knowledge that whoever got to this page would have been through this book a lot. But like, yeah. if we actually go through the thing, <laughs> it's just you just not- discovered <laughs> that there's maybe Yeti because he already knows about Yeti. So yeah. it's like. Now he he definitely knows about Yeti, right? Yeah, right, like, like so, like his passing. knowledge of Yeti proves to be useful. It's like, well, is this like a didn't... space vampire situation where no yeah. one's ever heard of them, but it, all of a sudden, all of a sudden, everyone's heard of them. Right, it all really right. is a space vampire situation. <laughs> I hate it. All right, he makes arrangements for you to be carried by helicopter to the base camp at Mount Everest. Maybe it's best to have him lead. It's his land, and he knows it well. <laughs> And then we go to page 23, which is... Uh, then the monastery. The monastery. Again? Yeah, where oh, you go meet up with Carlos and head toward the monastery. And then have the gravy. Mm, so do we get a definitive <laughs> ending if we refuse him one more time and claim to be the leader? Uh, yeah, yes! we definitely would. Cool, let's do it. Let's do that. <laughs> all right, murdered. so now we're going to see what happens when we yeah. are all like, oh, psh, fuck you, little man. <laughs> I'm the leader. I'm probably and This 12. is my expedition. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Do you know who I am? Do you even know who I am? I am protagonist B protagonist (laughs) of the Connecticut protagonists. (laughs) My local paper is going to hear about this, sir. (laughs) In an op-ed that I will pay to be put on the front page. Um... (laughs) <laughs> and everybody will accept it as news because we don't know how to discern anymore. <laughs> uh, <laughs> All right. Too real. The telephone rings, breaking the silence Ooh. in the room. Runel excuses himself and picks it up. Yes? It's a made-up conversation. <laughs> yes. I understand. I will tell them. He turns to you with a serious look in his face. Our king is bothered that the people are just Disturbing the peace of our land. <laughs> he apologizes. The king is not on the phone. But he has decided to close the mountains to all expeditions. <laughs> it is time for a rest. The Yeti are not animals. We will not allow them to be hunted anymore. I am sorry, my friend. Well, at least you didn't have to refuse Runel's offer of leadership. The end. <laughs> Also, um, Again, can, we just, can we just just talk about how the king of Nepal is clearly, <laughs> definitely the king of boots? Yeah, the king of boots. Many the king boots. of many boots. Our king of many boots. I thought it was really just his intern in the hall. Just like, yeah. okay, if I give the signal, you call me. And, don't then, call I me. He's the king. and then I'll pretend that they're like, I don't know, the king is on the phone. <laughs> I don't know if we have a king. I don't know either, but I mean, it's just a dial. This tone. kid doesn't know What's anything that? about that, so I he's, he's just yeah, call. Yeah. Like I, I'll stamp my foot three times like this, <laughs> and then you call my phone, and then I'll make something up because I don't want to talk to this kid. He's like, holy crap, he's an idiot. <laughs> it's just the dial. They're like, "What's that, Mister King?" At the time, at the tone, the time will be four p. Oh, sorry, country's closed. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> I like so, how, I like, uh, I, yeah, I like how nothing changed. Like we didn't do anything differently. Yeah, we didn't even we didn't get even have to a chance. assert our dominance. Yeah, it's like, just, no, we didn't have to assert anything. Uh, just merely thinking, just oh, like, I don't want to be the leader. It was enough for the king to call <laughs> yeah. and say, oh yeah, no, you, you, I, I had a uh, yeah, sense, we, like I had a feeling you were gonna say no. So. Also, like we we have a picture of 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 Runel, and he is a goofy ass looking. <laughs> A lot of power. Maybe he's the king. He might be the king. Yeah. king. <gasps> oh man! King all alone. Is he the oh, Christmas boots. prince pretending <laughs> to be? <laughs> No, he's the king of. Oh, dude! Hey, everybody, look forward to a, a Hallmark movie <laughs> about a lady lady mountain climber who's just too busy <laughs> that just goes climbing to Mount Everest and meets a uh, a, uh, a paper pusher <laughs> by the name of Runal that just so happens to be the secret king of Nepal, <laughs> and they fall in love. <laughs> <laughs> or as we call it, the land of many boots. Right, and then they go to the mountaintop, and then they go down an elevator, and then they go to a Yeti city, and nobody's happy. <laughs> the end. Just like uh, everybody. Well, that's like every Christmas movie. <laughs> <laughs> like every Christmas. <laughs> it ends, and nobody's happy. Uh, <laughs> We went down the chimney of existentialism. <laughs> Not really. Found nothing but 
Depression. So mm. that was another ending of <laughs> how this book could go. There are definitely other choices that you can make. Yes. Uh, there are 28 possible endings. Ooh. We hit maybe about um, 10 of them. Yeah. If you count yeah. in some of the ones that we skipped just because they were clearly, obviously, just like <laughs> one-page endings. Uh, so I would definitely recommend, uh, you want to know more about what could happen in The Abominable Snowman, go ahead and purchase it or check it out from your local library. Um, we're actually going to take a moment and uh, talk about uh, our feelings on this book. <laughs> um, oh, boy. Boy, oh, boy. <sighs> uh <laughs> Brian. Yeah, yeah. On a scale of 1 to 11 yetis, <laughs> dancing around a fire. Uh, I, uh, how many would you give this book? Now listen, folks. I had a lot of fun with you here <laughs> this time. <laughs> but fuck this book. I don't know if it's just an R.A. Montgomery thing that he's been uh, that I've been picking up on. But a lot of times, you get to the thing that you were going for, and it just, like, like just fucks off. And you don't... It's, like, not... Satisfying. There's no satisfactory endings. It, it's all about the journey, but the journey's not good enough to excuse the lack of an ending. Right. So I am going to give this one sad, lonely Yeti, the oh, last of his kind. Oh, no. That's the right. The last of the Yeti. One I mean, Yeti. actually, that's a better story than, yeah. than anything <laughs> then, in this book yeah. is you meet the last of the Yeti. I think it was that weird. Uh, I don't know. There were so many where it was like no matter what you did, you were just kind of like. Yeah, oh. you're just kind of stuck doing There's it. The doing weird, the even thing. when you got to freaking Shangri-La, and then it was like, oh, well, is that what you wanted? Is that really what you wanted? You little monkey person <laughs> dancing in your cage. Yeah, one Yeti. Yeah. One Yeti for this one. Okay. Uh, Jake, um, on a scale of one to three weeks, waiting on a monsoon. <laughs> <laughs> that's a small scale. <laughs> I mean, that's 27 days. Yeah, that's true. Oh, 21 days. 21. I can math. I don't know. I disagree um, with anything that anybody says. It's my leap week. strategy. Yeah. Uh, I mean... <sighs> Yeah, this was rough. This was not. A, this was not easy. Um, I'm gonna say one, uh, two, uh, one point five weeks, uh, maybe one point two five if you want to really ben. break it down, because it like it's kind of like an onion where you're peeling it back and it's like right. oh there's so much more to find here but then you keep peeling it there's, that's just like a it's just like it's a just tennis ball more onions and you're like oh this, okay this is hollow now. Yeah, and I thought right. this was something, but it's not. <laughs> like, hey, hey, you have a choice. Do you want to go through door A and see you, who knows, or do you want to <laughs> not do that? And you're like, oh, I don't want to do that. And you're like, book is over. <laughs> <laughs> and then you're like, oh yeah, I, I just said you want to go. I want to go through door A. You open the door into closet, and they're like, all right, get inside. <laughs> and they just close the door, and they're like, are you done now? And you're like, I, yeah, the book is over. <laughs> That's this book in a nutshell. So, yeah, I mean, it wasn't great. I, I'll tell you, it was, it was fun, but it wasn't yes. great. <laughs> yeah, there are definitely moments of this book that are, are definitely very fun. Mm -hmm. um if you but i i think you you like you get out of this book what you put into it yeah um yeah. i'm gonna reserve uh the rest of my feelings on this book uh until after we hear from joe joe yes on a scale of a uh, one to 12 sherpas doing all the work oh. <laughs> <laughs> what would you give this book oh man um <laughs> That is so hard. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to give it six Sherpas because mm. one of our adventures only gave us six, and clearly only six of the 12 were actually useful. If <laughs> the others were partying down. Right. Um, the but, other ones were just getting paid, and yes. God bless them. Yes. Yeah, go go get paid. If, if Seriously, if you are indigenous and, and, and rich people come to, you know, <laughs> explore tourism you, just get paid. Bring your whole family. Yeah. Bring 50 people. It's like, oh, no, you're going to need 50 of us. Yeah. <laughs> I will say, though. It's very dangerous. <laughs> um, <laughs> my experience of doing this show, however, has totally been the high-fiving and dancing Sherpas yes. in the background of well, that one they, illustration. Well, now we yeah. know why they were high-fiving and dancing is because they were, they were as twice as many as they needed. <laughs> Having a good time. <laughs> and, and they were just getting paid. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, any other thoughts, Joe, on the book? Um, there were so many times that I wanted to grab it from you and throw it across the room, <laughs> and I call that a successful yeah. book experience. Uh, Nick, on a scale of fruit bat or just a piece of fruit, what would you give this Um book? I'm going to give this uh, a piece of fruit. Oh, it's a bat! <laughs> oh, <damn it. laughs> 
Oh, I got bat blood in my mouth. They're so juicy, so you think it's a fruit, but uh, like well, then you come bats. down with salmonella. Uh, Wait, is that a thing? I don't know if bats have E. coli or salmonella. Everything that's raw has Let's one of the two. Let's just assume it has it, yeah. yeah. Well, it's one of the two. I don't know which. Like, I said salmonella because that's the chicken thing, and mm. they fly like chicken. So, uh, um, okay. now, if you were a, if you were a Biblical biologist, <laughs> you would put bats in with birds as the same sure. kind because okay. that's a. Thing. They're mammals, though, right? Yes, they, they are mammals. Yeah, mammals. Right, so they are not birds. No, I know they're not birds. But they might be bugs. They might be the <laughs> big bug scourge of the sky. That's bugs. <laughs> that's fairly certain. <laughs> um. I, yeah. I would. I would give it. Uh. Because there are there are very very fun moments in this book. Uh-huh. Um. Uh, I think I think this book uh, was um, helped along by a very silly voice that I gave to a certain character That's that true. is prevalent. It did help, yeah. Um, but not enough yetis either, frankly. No. Yeah, there barely are any yetis. Not enough yetis, and none of the yetis are abominable. Right. Yeah. There was or no even- abominable yeti going on. So it was like I was expecting almost a horror adventure. Yeah. Where like your attack, is, your your camp is attacked by yetis, and you have to decide whether or not they're evil or good or whatever. Or maybe is, we were the monsters all along. Yeah, well, those things. But no, we didn't Carlos, even get that. It was Carlos that was Carlos. the monster. Yes. Carlos was the monster the whole time. It's like you piece of shit. <laughs> yeah, but the, but there was none of that. It it, it just kind of devolved into some woo woo ignorant ass bullshit about like Shangri La and yeah. local religions, which uh, and and tying it into the Yeti, which is, I, I don't like it. Um, so, But do check out this book. Yes. I mean, check out You'll the have book. Fun. You'll have fun. You'll have fun. Because, again, there, there's, there. I mean, from what we read, there there was none of that. But That's true. There are, there definitely, there are definitely exciting pictures in this book that may <laughs> tell a different story. Yes. So, yeah. Yeah. so go ahead and check out the book. Or or don't. There are plenty of other <laughs> other books. Uh, what I find interesting, though, is um, Bantam Books doesn't really seem to know which one this is in the series. Oh. Because they have one series catalog which has this as number one. Oh. oh. And then they have another series catalog, which which is this is number thirteen. Huh. So that's Weird. that is very interesting. Cave of Time is either number one in the series that this is number thirteen, but then this is number one in another series. Well, clearly the Cave of Time went back in time to change itself to number. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> and then uh, and then it gave Mandela his life back. <laughs> yes. And uh, then he rose from the dead. <laughs> and went and saw Shazam. And changed all <laughs> the all the Steen Bears. To <laughs> it's like, hey, if you think it was the Baron Steen Bears, you're just very German coming from a very German Gosh. background. Because it just makes more sense to you yeah. than Baron Steen. Also, they used cursive and you were a child, so you couldn't read it too well. Uh, um, I always thought it was Baron Stein. <laughs> no, but- <laughs> <laughs> like Frankenstein, but with bears. Bears. <laughs> Frankenstein's bears. <laughs> no, the bear was the doctor. <laughs> the doctor was a woman. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, Baron, Dr. Baron, Dr. Von Berenstein is Mama Bear. Baron Von Berenstein. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, and she has two children and an oafish husband, um, uh-huh. which is, hey, do you think The Simpsons was very much informed by the Berenstein Bears? Because I, mean. I sure do. <laughs> anyway, uh, that digression being held, uh, check out a bottle Snowman. <laughs> If you want, you can you make know, up your own voice fine. for RN Runel. Yeah, um, as it doesn't work if it's not made up. <laughs> um, yeah. So anyway, uh, that's that's that book. All right. Uh, thank you so much uh, for listening to us uh, read through that book. I hope you had as much fun as we had reading it. Um, thank you to Sexy Hackers for giving us this wonderful space to uh, do all of these uh, podcasts for you. Um, if you have a chance and you haven't already, go ahead and, and like and subscribe to us on your favorite podcast catcher. Um, that helps us get the word out because right now I know that the audience is um, the people that I know. <laughs> and that's great. 
great and I love you and I just think that more people should listen to yeah. us and I said that out loud. Um, <laughs> tell your friends. Uh, review yeah. us. Tell your friends. Review us on iTunes. Yeah, tell, tell your enemies. Yeah, tell all of your enemies. Yes. Tell everybody. Tell yeah. everybody. Uh, tell tell the Yeti. Yes. Um, <laughs> go if you're ready for this Yeti. <laughs> if you're ready for this Yeti. <laughs> and you want a plate of spaghetti. <laughs> And we should celebrate with some confetti. Oh. Ah. Uh, um, yeah, like and subscribe. <laughs> um, also, while you're here on the Sexy Hackers website, go ahead and uh, click over to where you can purchase a T-shirt because mm -hmm. they make such great T-shirts. They are actually very, very well, well made. Um, uh, so go ahead and do that. Uh, speaking of T-shirts, uh, we have somebody who has an expert on uh, things printed onto things. Yes. Uh, over on my left, uh, Miss Joe Montana. Joe, what's yes. going on with you? Uh, besides feeling lovely in this amazing t-shirt, uh, I inevitably will be making more stickers and mm -hmm. posting them online, including my Instagram. What uh, What's the name of that? Where can people find oh, your stuff that they can purchase you from you can find my and support your life? Yes, <laughs> uh, that would be, I would love support in my life. <laughs> that would be on Instagram at so hi do s o h i d o or at so hi do dot com which is the same spelling but with dot com at the end of it oh yeah, i know oh. couldn't get dot gov your, right. your eyes have been open so mm. listen all right um jake what's you up to i'm uh, just writing stuff cool <laughs> yeah that's it i don't want to nobody i don't want you to know about it but no, anyway, so no, don't so tell. Much. Don't tell us. So I'm gonna tell you. Don't tell us because <laughs> then, because then you're, because then you're busy talking about what you're writing and not writing it. Boom, you get yeah, it. I know See, the tricks. He gets it. Mm -hmm. um, I still don't follow him. I talk about everything that I'm writing and I don't write. <laughs> fuck all. <laughs> like, and then this is gonna happen. And then there's gonna be a really, really cool character. And I was like, oh man, this sounds great. It's like, when is it gonna happen? Never. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes. I will never have it for you. It's an easy trap to fall into. <laughs> Brian, what's uh, what are you going on this week? Um, yeah, I'm not sure what week it is, so I'll just say uh, it is uh, probably the second or third week of, of March, of my, April, uh, April, April. Okay. Ooh. Um, well, uh, I would say for my stuff, uh, just again check out uh, my Instagram. That's where I do a lot of uh, put stuff about my shows, and that is at Dry Erase Comics, and comics is with an yeah. X. Um, and also, I don't know if it's, well, it's never too late to, uh, uh, vote for things. So I'm going to say get out there and vote, uh, this year as, uh, elections happen. And cause it's good to be part of, uh, democracy. Just to piggyback off that, it, it can be too late to vote. So make well, sure you vote on for time. Sure, <laughs> like you they they keep vote. handing out elections. <laughs> after, I mean, there's... I don't know when this drops, but it might be too late for the April vote. But there is a vote coming up in April, or yes. has happened in April. Uh, that's our primary vote, and, and um, uh, even important. even if Super Tuesday was a thing that you think had already happened, and the vote's coming up, vote anyway because vote anyway. Uh, Super Tuesday is only like you know half the states. Yeah. So just do so it. So anyway. Just just also, it. also, there's always something on the ballot that is exactly. local That's, that actually affects you. That's in what I meant. Real life. It's not too late to. Yeah. Day to day. Yes. So Not too late to start voting. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah, there it is. Now I'm because waiting. guess what? Uh, Runel uh, held an elected <laughs> position, and he kind of sucks at his job. He controls so, the weather. Right. So <laughs> yes. we don't want a guy like Runel in charge. And the only way to do that and get him out of there is through a local election. You can't wait for the national. For so that. vote Sirdar this year. Either. Vote Sirdar. <laughs> well, he was at the behest of the king, so I don't know how much oh, elections. Yeah. I don't know how much of that's happening. But. I'm pretty sure it was parliamentary. <laughs> yeah, it could have been. Could have been. Maybe it was an illusion. It's no, a, I mean, you know, a it's a, over there. It's a yetiocracy anyway. <laughs> <Yeti -ocracy>. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so uh, go vote. <laughs> um, and, uh, uh, buy a t-shirt from Sexy Hackers. They are yes, oh yes. so comfortable so and yes. efficacious. Um, listen uh, to some other podcasts on the Sexy Hackers. Yes. Ones. Listen yeah, to who... I'm wearing the shirt of Who Let Me Read This. Mm -hmm. They are so fun. They are I love fun. them. I love them so much. Yes, they are, they are wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Um, uh, as we were recording, they're doing Johnny the Homicide of Maniac, oh. which I had a chance to read like issue one, and I was like, nope. <laughs> uh, <laughs> 
And uh, yeah, and they're resetting. They're actually doing a Who Let Me Watch This has probably already happened, which oh, is going to be very fun. fun. Yeah. Um, uh, but yes, uh, go check out Who Let Me Read This. It's a bunch of uh, very, very funny ladies mm -hmm. uh, bringing their unique perspectives on the books that they read as children because their parents were just excited for them to read and had no idea what the content was of the books they were reading as children. And they discuss on uh, the things that made them grow up maybe a little too fast. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> and uh go ahead also uh check out um all arcadians oh yeah which yeah. is a um bi-monthly uh serial podcast in which uh the a story unfolds in the fantasy world of arcadia um so go ahead and check out all of those things i'd like to once again thank everybody here that was playing with me tonight reading through this uh mm -hmm. this book by r.a mm -hmm. montgomery uh lastly i would like to thank you uh, for being you, listening to us do 10 minutes of plugs <laughs> and then read to you. With that, I'll say I'm going to see you next week. Three years. I don't think you're ready for this yet. I don't think you're ready for this yet. My yet is too booed and they should ask for you, baby. I don't think you're ready for this yet. No. SexyHackers.com Stream Team. I